Hi everyone. So we did our project on an article by the Journal of Educational Psychology. It's titled Achievement Effects of Embedded Multimedia in a Success for All Reading Program. So before we get started into the specifics of the study, I just wanted to give you guys a little background on our topic. So the journal defined embedded media as teaching methods that embedded video content within teachers lessons. Another research project that came before the present study that we went in detail about um, had data collected and suggested multimedia instruction enhances learning of students due to the use of visual and verbal memory systems. Now I'm going to go into more detail about the present day study that we looked more in depthly into. So on our next slide is our rationale. And we chose this article because using video content and lessons is a great way for teachers to utilize technology. It's only becoming more and more prevalent that we're going to be using technology in the classroom. So we just found this to be something that would be useful. Um, it's also something I'm confident in saying future teachers like us will be implementing embedded multimedia in our classrooms one day because as I said before, it's just something that's not going away and we're always going to be using technology in the classroom. And lastly, it's not only something that's relevant to us as teachers one day, but it's also very relevant to us as students as a majority of our classes use embedded videos and lessons. And I can confidently say that I know we all have at least one class that uses this, and it's Dr. Rogers Reading Foundation class. Um, we're always watching videos and lectures, and I know that there's also some videos that go along with the textbook online, um, the Pearson one. Our next slide is connection to course content. And I kind of covered this in our rationale a little bit too, but just to you know reiterate, um, this is relevant to us in our Reading Foundations class because we've seen embedded multimedia in all of our lessons pretty much with Dr. Rogers. Um, in her presentations, her PowerPoint presentations, we always see links to a YouTube video or something that we saw in the Pearson text and it's just a great way to kind of connect what we're learning in class with our visual and verbal senses. We read in our article that Early research on educational programs like the classic show Sesame Street showed positive effects for reading and language development in children. However, despite this fact, the use of videos remained minor. And our article states that the purpose of the study chosen was to investigate if using embedded multimedia in a lesson was beneficial to early language learners. Our next slide is to tell you guys about the participants. So the article tells us that the participants in the study were first graders who learned reading through the Success for All program. This included lessons using embedded videos and in the control group, they did not use videos. The study was composed of 450 students. However, only 394 students completed the pre and post test assessments for the study. Now we're gonna talk about the context. So our study took place in Hartford, Connecticut. Um, the study took place in 10 high poverty schools, five of which were experimental and five of which were the control group. The population of the schools had almost all students who qualified for free and reduced lunches. And the racial breakup was about 62% Hispanic, 35% African American, and the rest was white. So now I'm going to talk about the steps in sequence. After identifying the schools and participants, the study utilized pretests to adjust for any initial difference to increase statistical power. On average, each pretest took about 30 minutes. In following the pretest, the experimental group used multimedia content in their 90 minute success for all reading lesson. Each lesson used a range of 30 seconds to three minutes of embedded content in the lessons. Um, the control schools, however, still use the 90-minute lessons um, from Success for All Reading, but they did not have the multimedia component. So instead of having the embedded um, content of like videos, they would use picture cards, demonstrations, and games. 
So over the course of seven months, from October to May, participants were tested. The article stated, on average, each test took about 42 minutes compared to that 30-minute average from the pretest. The article also states that under the treatments section, what these embedded multimedia um, presentations looked like. So inside of the success for all, um, there was animated alphabet, the sound and fury, between the lions and word plays. So in animated alphabet, it lasted about 30 seconds to a minute long. These animations taught and reinforced sound symbol relationships. So for example, for the short E sound, they did an elephant example and the elephant was pushing a lowercase E up a hill and once it reached the top, the E rolled back down. So on the way up the hill, the elephant would make the short E sound, and once the E rolled down the hill after all that work, the elephant let out an E eh sound in frustration. With the sound and fury, the multimedia skits used puppets. They lasted about two minutes long, and there was more than 100 puppets illustrating sound blending strategies from consonant vowel consonant words to multisyllable words. Between the Lions was a puppet skit animation kind of show, and it was from the award-winning show to teach phonic awareness and sound symbol correspondence and sound blending. They lasted around a minute long. And lastly, we had the word plays. Um, they lasted on average about three minutes long. So skits were used to dramatize important vocabulary words from the success for all, such as chopsticks, fireworks, beautiful, and ugly. According to the article, this study employed a trial design with random assignments of schools to treatments. This included the 10 elementary schools. Five of the schools were placed with standard success for all, which was the control group. The other five were programmed to success for all with embedded multimedia. This was the experimental group. The control group used the regular 90 minute success for all reading program without the embedded multimedia content. The data throughout the study is represented by the students from their pre- and post-test scores. The pre-tests were the P-Body Picture Vocabulary Test, which stands for PPVT. The other tests included the Word Identification Subtest from the Woodcock Reading Mastery test revised, which also stands for WMRT-R. The posts tests throughout this data were the reading fluency tests, which comes from the dynamic indicators of basic literacy learning skills, which we know as DIBBLES. Three scales from the WRMTR word identification, word attack, and passage comprehension. The investigators' role in the progress in the process was administering the test to each of the control and experiment groups, making sure this was done fairly. So throughout the study, um, the proper analysis that was used was the hierarchical linear modeling. Um, this was the most appropriate analysis used because the conservative analysis for cluster um, randomized the designs. Classroom level analysis, um, it could not be used because the success for all program that was used in the study rotates reading teachers over the year. They analyzed the oversample and for a Hispanic subsample throughout the study. It was 
So throughout this study, um, the results were that the initial pretest score showed that both groups were even on the PBVT, uh, but the control group scored higher on the word identification pretest which on the post-test, they found that the experimental group scored significantly higher than the control group on the word attack subtest. Um, going along with that, the experimental group once again scored higher on the word identification, passage comparison, and dibbles. Um, but although these were not statistically significant with the results. The Hispanic subsample was very similar to the whole sample and no interactions were found between the two. So moving on with the conclusions throughout this study in this journal, um, the results do support the expectation that the addition of embedded multimedia content to a beginning reading program, it would enhance children's reading achievement. And that's a really important note to make. The use of embedded multimedia content was the only differentiating factor between the experimental and control group when they ran the data. Um, also along with this, only word attack showed significant differences was in line with theoretical expectations. So word attack's key components are letter sounds and sound blending. Um, which are also three of the four multimedia segments mainly that were consumed. The use of embedded assessments has the potential to enhance the effectiveness of beginning reading instruction for disadvantaged children. So moving on with the conclusions, the researchers expected that Hispanic children would benefit more from the embed eye multimedia, um, and it was proven throughout the study and the data that this was not the case. Um, the effect on the word attack is educationally important, um, especially related to the cost and time for the intervention. Um, it was on average less than five minutes. It is known that to really understand these effects with multimedia, multimedia assessment is um, that more research is obviously needed to further understand these effects. Using design principles known to are known to contribute to learning. Multi-embedded and literacy instruction may have a significant potential to increase and improve the reading outcomes for children. Some cautions to be aware of um, with this study is a larger experiment is needed to provide sufficient statistical power for the analysis, at least possibly 40 schools. Um, along with that, smaller scale studies are needed to examine the separate impacts of the embedded multimedia. Um, this would just suggest design principles for further development. Also, studies should add measurement of vocabulary outcomes, especially for English language learners. It would be important to study the program's effect on teachers' practices as well, um, because this would allow access to the quality of the theory that multimedia modeling of effective teaching practices could improve how the teacher implements the teaching program into the classroom while increasing the teacher skill as well. It's important to note too that this research is so crucial because specific research on multimedia learning shows certain design elements matter a lot when determining learning outcomes. So to wrap up all of our thoughts, we have our discussion slide. Um, and on this slide, we just kind of included some of our natural conversation that happened when we were done reading the article. So we all found this article to be extremely relevant to all four of us since we're all going into education and we want to become future teachers. We agreed that the article hit the nail on the head. Technology isn't going anywhere. It's really only growing. We also all said how important it is to incorporate technology in the classroom for our lessons. We also all agreed that it's important that we understand how to use technology. That way you can do more with it. So please comment and ask any questions you have about our article. 
And if you want to, you can comment if you agree or disagree with our conclusions and explain why or why not. Thank you.